metabolically healthy, I'm not surprised if you take a blood test and you see that they've got low triglycerides and low glucose. Whereas somebody who's metabolically challenged and they've got worse fuel flux, that they might actually be seeing a lot more triglycerides and glucose. Does that mean triglycerides and glucose are in fact the cause? Well, I'm very interested in what's ahead and what's causing that traffic jam. But importantly, a key difference here is to bear in mind that VLDL are carrying these triglycerides, so they're also seeing the vehicles that are transporting it. It's very relevant when you're looking at ApoB, if ApoB is part of that larger lineage of both VLDL and LDL. Now I have to ask an extremely rhetorical question. Why wouldn't delivery failure by lipoproteins be relevant for the diseases they are associated with? I hope that lingers because that's an important point that I would love everybody, layperson to lipidologist alike, to keep in close consideration. Atherogenic dyslipidemia, it's been around for decades. And yes, it's a typical feature of obesity, metabolic syndrome, insulin resistance, and type 2 diabetes. Atherogenic dyslipidemia is this combination. If you have low HDL cholesterol and high triglycerides, it's very likely you will have a preponderance of small, dense LDL particles.